I would like now to introduce Dr. Hadar Ziv, who is one of our instructors in uh, ICS. Hadar, among many other courses, has been teaching one of our capstone design courses for many years now, and he will start the presentation of the student groups from engineering and ICS. Hadar. Hello, everyone, and again, welcome. I am, uh, as Dean Mario said, the bridge between the, the previous presentations and the student presentations, sort of the low point between the two high points. <laughs> I'm also here for comic relief. <laughs> so I will tell you that when the project started back in uh, September of 2016, I had a full head of hair. <laughs> no, we, we won't go there. But everyone works really hard on the projects, and one of the things that has happened with the Ingenuity event over its five years of existence is the funneling and selection of projects has become more and more diverse, more and more interesting. Today you will see presentations, and then later on outside you will see demonstrations from projects representing both schools, uh, representing winners of the Dean's Projects Awards from the School of Engineering and the School of ICS, students from my classes, from other professors' classes, from engineering courses, students who won the uh, awards in the engineering design event back in March, winners of the Beale and Butterworth competitions, some game design winners, quite a variety of projects will be presented to you. The projects will cover a variety of topics, ranging from fun educational games to more serious matters, such as burn wounds and cardiac arrest, to very extremely serious subjects like sex slavery, which will be the first presentation given. As was mentioned earlier, today is actually chock full of celebrations. Uh, earlier today, was, as was mentioned, we celebrated the non-retirement <laughs> of the Olsons. So let's, uh, let's have a big hand one more time for the Olsons and all the Ingenuity Awards. <laughs> And finally, for all the students who are here and all the teams that they represent, a big round of applause for the students. Thank you, we are ready. On behalf of Janik Industries and the Million Kids Organization, I present to you the Million Kids Educational App. Each year, one million kids are sold into human trafficking across the globe. Despite Opal and Million Kids' current success, human trafficking and sex slavery is more prevalent today than ever before and is growing each and every day. Not only is this a problem in foreign countries, but it is a problem within the United States and your very own backyards. Criminals are becoming smarter each and every day, and they are becoming more technologically advanced, and so must we in order to stop them. That is why Opal has had us use our knowledge and skill set to create a mobile application in order to educate both parents and children on the very real danger of human trafficking and sex slavery. Our app is unique in that it has two sides to it. It has a parent side and a child side. The parent side provides users with textual information in order to educate adults on the dangers of human trafficking, as well as preventative measures and warning signs to look for in your children. The child side plays out as a choose your own adventure game. Children can choose their age range and then play the scenarios to learn the right behaviors in order to live a safe and healthy lifestyle. The Million Kids Educational app will guide children through how to handle common scenarios and can lead, uh, can lead to human traffic and that can lead to human trafficking, giving tips and safety suggestions along the way. Our user testing by elementary school children has shown that this app is an app that your children will want to play and one that will help them reduce the risk of becoming human trafficking victims each time they play our app. Human trafficking is everyone's problem. It affects our friends, our children, and our families. We need to work together using all of our resources because it takes more than one person, one team, and one organization to save one million kids. Thank you. Hello everyone, good evening. My name is Maiki Pranda and I'm a member of Salix Diagnostics. We are a team of six biomedical engineers with a mission to promote excellence in diagnostic imaging technology and patient care. So, what's the problem we face and why are we here today? 
Burn wounds are the fourth most common cause of trauma worldwide. In the US alone, half a million people seek treatment annually. The issue with this is that the only method of point of care diagnostics is visual inspection. And as you can imagine, it's a very subjective process. In fact, I have a small example for you today. Please be warned that the following images are graphic. So if you look at these two second degree burn wounds, it's not always um, apparent that the one on the right would require more medical attention. Misdiagnosis can greatly impact a patient's morbidity, mortality, and quality of life. That brings us to our solution, the VEST Imager. The VEST Imager allows for a quantitative, non-invasive assessment of a burn wound by its optical properties. It works by projecting sinusoidal images onto the burn wound, which is then captured by a camera, and that image is analyzed by an algorithm developed at the Beckman Laser Institute. Uh, the image, or the technology, is better known as spatial frequency domain imaging and provides information regarding scattering, tissue oxygenation, and depth sensitivity, allowing for a quantitative assessment of burn wounds uh, really quickly and accurately. A few highlights of our project include winning Dean's Choice Award at the Winter Design Review, receiving um, support from Europe, and winning two awards at the TechSurge uh, competition and New Venture competition, as well as presenting our idea to President, um, UC President Napolitano during her visit to UCI. We'd like to thank the following entities for their support throughout the entire year, and I thank you for your time today, and I invite you to check out our um, booth in the courtyard. Thank you so much. Hello, and thank you. My name is Daniel McInnes, and I'm speaking on behalf of Team Terrakeen. In partnership with our sponsor, GigaSavvy, I would like to introduce you to the real-time digital intelligence dashboard. GigaSavvy, a local creative marketing agency, relies heavily on social media and other paid campaigns to monitor the success of their own clients and their own internal use. And despite the fact that this is such an important part of their marketing and business strategy, they needed a better way to track these social media interactions. Our solution, the Real-Time Digital Intelligence Dashboard, provides an easy platform to monitor the performance of these social media and other paid campaigns. Our dashboard displays real-time interactions from Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and provides their own individual dashboards for each of these accounts. When you first enter the application, you're provided with a broad overview of how each of these platforms are performing. Over the last 100 days, you're able to easily see what needs to change on each of these accounts. If you'd like to dive in deeper, you can go to the individual dashboard to see just how that platform has performed over 30, 60, or 90 days. At each point in time, you can select that post to be taken directly to the social media platform to see exactly what content was that provided an increase in user engagement and traffic. I'd like to express gratitude to UCI and the informatics department for enabling a platform where we can work with a team like GigaSavvy, where we can do some serious work, but also have a lot of fun along the way. I encourage you to stop by our demo station to learn more, and thank you for your time. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Will Amos, and I'll be talking to you about our project for new 3D print. Before I do, though, we've been having a really awesome year, and that would not be possible without our fantastic team of artists and engineers over here, as well as our fantastic advisors, Professor Jesse Jackson and Professor Mark Walter. So I want to say thank you to all of them before I begin here. So let's get into it. What is Renew 3D Print? What's our project? We are closing the recycling loop right here on campus using decentralized recycling and 3D printing. We can take waste from 3D printers, as well as from conventional waste streams like uh, solo cups or coffee lids, to name a couple, and make that into printable filament that can then be used on projects right here at UCI and close the loop right here on campus. So what does our system actually do? Uh, our system takes waste plastic, grinds it down, it then goes into an extruder where it is melted uh, in a wire-like fashion through a diameter controller and onto a spool. This spool can then be put into any 3D printer you want uh, as shown on the screen. Now, this didn't work right out of the box. There were a few problems we had to solve, one of them being the consistency of the grind. When we grind the plastic down, it has to be a certain size, and so we printed and designed our own sieve system that only allows smaller particles of plastic to go through into the extruder. We also had to make sure that the diameter of the filament was very precise to the tolerances of the printer we were using it on, so we created a sensor system that uses real-time data to control the filament as it's going on to the spool and make sure it's the right diameter. One of the last problems we had to solve was that when we were spooling the uh, filament onto the spool, the wheels that pull the filament onto it were actually too firm from the factory, and so we printed and designed using a special blend of TPU plastic wheels that were soft enough to not deform the plastic in its cross-section, but actually still pull it onto the spool. So 
thank you all so much for coming today, and um, I hope to see you guys at the demo stations out in the plaza. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Evan, and I'm presenting my platform, Memorlane, which allows you to collect almost every single photo at your personal event. So approximately 15 years ago in the golden age when technology didn't ruin social interaction, uh, people actually watched the event. But fast forward 15 years later, and people just like yourself now are all enamored with getting the perfect shot on their phone. But you have to wonder, if this many people are taking photos on their phone, well, surely thousands of photos at the end of the event must be available to view. But the truth is, is that the bride and groom, or maybe the host of the party, will actually never see these photos because the guest lists are too large. Can you imagine having to physically uh, go ahead and email or text message 200 to 300 people? Uh, it would take quite a long time, maybe a few hours. So we've come up with a platform for you to uh, easily collect every single photo at these events. So for those of you that are tech savvy, it starts with creating a geofence. And for those of you that are not, a geofence is essentially a perimeter that is set on a map. And anybody that enters the vicinity of that perimeter then has access to whatever that geofence may offer. So in this case, it's a photo album. Anybody that enters the vicinity of that perimeter takes a photo of whatever's going on at the event. And the photos automatically collect in a photo album where at the end of the event, everybody can go in and download whatever photos they like. And it saves the hassle of having to uh, text message and email everyone. So uh, this year we won the NVC competition, uh, first place in consumer services. We also won first place in the Butterworth competition. Um, and that's all thanks to you people for putting that on. So thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Nuria Varela, and I'm the project manager of Sunsunning Medical, a team of six biomedical engineers. And our mentor is Dr. Krugel from the BME department. Today, I'm going to talk about the Rapid Hemorrhagic and Ischemic Stroke Evaluator, LICE. A stroke is the number one leading cause of long-term disability in the United States, leading to a 33 billion dollar cost from healthcare services to treatment and loss of productivity. The fundamental reason why a stroke is the leading cause of uh, leading cause of long-term disability in the United States is because there is two types of stroke and we cannot differentiate them fast enough. Our current method to differentiate these two types of stroke is CT scan, and it can only be used in the hospital because CT scan is not portable. This leads to delay of treatment to thousands of long of stroke patients in the United States. This is why Sensenium Medical created RICE. RICE can differentiate your type of stroke before reaching the hospital from a drop of blood. RICE can separate blood cells from plasma, allowing us to detect biomarkers from rupture and clots in your brain. Price is more portable, as accurate, and one-fourth of the cost of a CT scan. Because when your life is at risk, every minute matters. Thank you. Please stop. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Maria Galindo. I'm a member of Nielsen Ninjas. We partnered with uh, Astronics Test Systems, a test and measurements systems provider here in Irvine. And together we developed a wafer tracking system. Wafer, it's in two parts, WaferNav is our uh, mobile app and Activate WaferNav is our desktop cell controller. So why do we care about wafers? They're thin slices of semiconductor material used to create integrated circuits. They're used in electronic devices such as cell phones and laptops. They must be tested, and Astronix has tested over 9 billion devices over the last 20, 20 years. They uh, batch wafers into lots, and as you can imagine, the testing system can get complicated with many different operators moving many different lots to multiple test stations. Enter WaferNav. This is our model, our mobile app. From here, a um, operator may receive delivery information and document each step in a three-part testing system of load, test, and unload. 
each entry updates the, the database so that a system administrator may know where any given lot is at any given time. This is a screenshot of our desktop controller, Activate WaferNav. From here, an administrator may upload delivery information and may also view historical data to ensure proper load balancing for future cases. By using WaferNav and Activate WaferNav, you'll know the location of any given wafer at any given time in the testing process. You can also use it to automatically configure routes and manually or manually override them if the situation de de determines that. And we, cause, because um, documentation is important, we made it scalable to create and generate reports. So we would love to give you a demo of our system. Please stop by our table. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Arwa Tazani, and I'm the project manager of the Hyperexcite team here at UC Irvine. We're a team of undergraduate engineering students building a pod for the SpaceX Hyperloop pod competition. So for those of you that don't know, what is a Hyperloop? Well, it's a concept originally proposed by Elon Musk for what's essentially a high-speed train in a vacuum that travels from San Francisco to Los Angeles in under 30 minutes at a top speed of 760 miles an hour. So let's break down our design. Here you can see our basic structure. The most amazing feature of our design is the four air levitation skis located in the front and in the back of our pod that allow us to coast through the tube by hovering over a cushion of air. In the center, you can see our stabilizer wheels, and just outside of that is our magnetic braking system, which utilizes permanent magnets to create eddy currents that slow down our pot. Here, you can see our air cylinders, which we use to actuate all of our systems, and just on top of that is the piping and electrical system. All of that is encased in a carbon fiber fairing that we built ourselves just like everything else. <laughs> so this is where we're at now. Over 320 teams from 23 countries proposed their preliminary designs to SpaceX for the competition. Out of all of those teams, I am proud to say that we placed fifth worldwide for overall design and first among the teams using air-based levitation. From that, we were able to move on to be one of the 29 teams in competition weekend one, and we passed every single preliminary test. And now we're moving on to competition weekend two, one of 23 teams. And we can't wait for it at the end of this summer. So right now we're redesigning and rebuilding some of our subsystems in order to optimize our pod and hopefully win first place at the competition. This is what our pod looks like now. This is us at competition weekend. I hope you come and see it for yourself. It's an amazing project. As always, I'd like to thank all of our sponsors. And of course, thank you to all of you. Hello everybody, my name is Alexander Longazo and I am representing the Sankofa team today. My advisor for this project was Professor Magda Elzarki and my mentors were Professor Patricia Seed and Jessica Kernan. Sankofa is a third person exploration game that was developed using the Unity game engine. The purpose of Sankofa is to teach young teens about Ashante culture in Ghana, West Africa, which is a subject that is not currently in the educational curriculum. The story of Sankofa is narrated by Anansi who is a trickster and a shapeshifter that is a common character found in many West African folktales. In the game, you can play as a girl or a boy, and your first task is to collect yams and deliver them to your father in the marketplace. Anansi then appears to you and asks if you need assistance with picking the lambs and gives you his magic mask. After collecting enough yams, Anansi tricks, the, tricks you and takes the yams from you, causing a chase scene where you have to catch him and retrieve the yams to deliver them to your father. This image shows the main character in the first level of the game. While playing Sankofa, you will learn about how names are given in Ashanti culture, a little, bit about, a little bit about Ashanti storytelling, the different uses of Ashanti drums, and what Adinkra symbols and their meanings are. Adinkra symbols can be collected throughout the game and are found in hidden locations. These images show the character select screen where your name is given to you based on your day of birth, and a drum mini game, which is found in the marketplace and is similar to the game of Simon Says. After you complete the main story, you can explore an Ashanti marketplace where you can make your own Adinkra cloth and play other mini games. These images show the user interface for the Adinkra mini game and the in game inventory where you can view the Adinkra symbols that you have collected throughout the game and look at more information about them. Thank you for your time, and I hope I, you come by our booth to play Sankofa. Hi everyone, 
my name is Jahara. I'll be representing Team Bobcat Mobile. Before I start, I'd just like to say thank you to our project sponsor, David Wood, and our advisor, Hadar Zip. So in today's world, many organizations are expected to plan complex events that require many components and many volunteers in order to achieve their business goals. Eventeen is an event planning application that plans to uh, implement intuitive design to transform these complex events into easily manageable components. Over the course of two quarters, our team has worked tirelessly and meticulously to, e to simplify event planning um, to, uh, so that every detail is easily captured, encapsulated, and uh, accessible in a functional mobile application. There are many event applications currently in the market. However, they lack a unified place for management and coordination. Through Eventine, we allow our users to thoroughly plan events so that um, oh, by creating smaller event uh, parts. We are built with React Native and iOS and Android um, one source code. Our solution allows for better organization and stronger project management. The key features of our application includes viewing event details, viewing and checking in participants, and contacting event organizers. Let me give you an example. Bob is a scoutmaster of 30 Boy Scouts. They are planning to drive to a camping site uh, for a camping event. But before they do, Bob has to do a headcount of all scouts before they drive out. Using the check-in section of the Eventeen application, Bob can easily and quickly uh, keep track of attendance for that part of the event. With that, the Scoutmaster can now manage his scouts and the um, entire event all in one source without the hassle of extra materials such as attendance sheets and schedules. So we invite you to come test out Eventeen for yourselves. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Ethan Kirkley, and I'm representing Probotech. We strive to advance human assistive robotics. Our team consists of myself, lead of concept design and prototyping, Cameron Hunt, head of uh, electrical and fabrication, and Kevin Wong, who's responsible for design and control systems. Our product is CroboHand, a low-cost, high-functionality robotic prosthetic hand. So the motivation behind CroboHand stems from this gap that exists in the upper limb prosthesis industry between cost and functionality. On one end of the spectrum, you have low-cost, low-functionality devices, such as the Raptor hand, and on the up opposite side, you have high-cost, but still low to medium functionality, such as the split hook. So we want to fill this gap with a device that is both low cost but high functionality. Uh, to do so, utilizing or fabrication utilizing dual material 3D printing is a must. The Kerbal hand consists of a rigid material and a flexible material. We will be streamlining electromyography between uh, amputee and uh, device, and in doing so, creating a sleek, clean, and recognizable prosthesis. So on the mechanical side of things, each digit has an integrated 3D printed extensor tendon, which allows the finger to open up naturally to a resting position. On the opposite side from the same flexible material are grips printed due to their high coefficient of friction. Every linear joint is printed pre-assembled and uh, every digit is modular at the lateral joint. So in the event where an amputee would accidentally break off one of the fingers of the curbo hand, they could easily replace it instead of having to buy an entirely new device. So overall, the curbo hand has very, mo very minimal post-production required. On the electrical side of things, each curbo hand consists of five continuous servo motors which allow for linear movement to close the fingers and five regular servo motors, which allow the fingers to move laterally side to side. The curbo hand will be controlled by a myo armband, which is attached to the amputee's existing muscle groups, and this will uh, wirelessly send the EMG signal via Bluetooth to an Arduino Uno 101, which will then translate that into either linear or lateral output movement. All of this will be powered by a rechargeable lithium-ion battery pack, which the amputee can easily plug into a common household outlet. That's all the time we have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this short presentation on curbo hand, and we look forward to seeing you at our booth. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Sean Ratcliffe and I'm here on behalf of Team Reaction. We're excited to present a data analysis application that's based on Airbnb data. For those of you who might be unfamiliar, Airbnb is a website. You can rent out anything from a spare couch to a beach house. Um, earning rental income on an ad hoc basis is very appealing, so Airbnb has really shaken things up. Uh, in fact, more than 150 million people to date um, have signed in and actually stayed in Airbnbs. My team built a tool to help Airbnb hosts uh, who are new to the platform understand the marketplace. We used data uh, for this proof of concept from over 26,000 Los Angeles listings. We combined that data uh, with local crime, economics, and demographic data. Our app has two main components, exploration and prediction. For exploration, our app has an interactive visualization. For example, users can overlay crime data on top of local prices. Uh, they can also examine aggregated listing features in specific neighborhoods and, and do a lot more. And that's the first half of what our app provides. We're also excited about the second part of the app, which is a predictive tool. 
the biggest question that people have uh, coming to this platform, uh, you know, from this, this side of a um, property owner is how much is my place going to be worth? And RF can help you find that, out, that answer. You tell us where you're located, how many bedrooms, bathrooms you have, what amenities you have, and our algorithm does the rest. Our app uses machine learning, which is a powerful branch of AI that allows computers to learn complex rules from data, like how much a swimming pool is worth if it's attached to a three-bedroom house in Malibu. This is really cool. Using data from old listings, we can predict what a new place is going to be worth. We've tested this, and it works well. In fact, the average error is just about $18. In summary, our app has two components. The visualization side lets you explore and compare neighborhoods. The predictive tool provides powerful insight into how you should price your own listing. You could even find your closest competitors. With our app, new Airbnb hosts can quickly understand the market and where they fit into it. Thank you, and we hope to see you at our demonstration.